For humanity, for people to set foot on Mars would just be an extraordinary experience, I think. The most challenging aspect of humans going to Mars is really the environment. It's a really harsh environment. It's extremely cold. There's obviously uh, no atmosphere, no oxygen to breathe, so you would have to take your oxygen supplies. And there's also extreme radiation on the Martian surface. Mars is being bombarded by cosmic rays. And so it's actually really challenging. There's lots of health hazards. And these are all the biological problems that we have to solve before we actually send astronauts to Mars. Well, going to Mars would be really challenging, specifically from a technical point of view. But what we might not realize, I think from a psychological point of view, it might be even harder. Imagine living on Mars. It's so far that you won't be able to have direct communication with Earth. You won't be able to do a phone call. You won't be able to do a video call. The only thing you can do is send messages back and forth. So when you send a message, it might take 20 minutes to get there, you have to wait another 20 minutes to get it back. So I think maybe that idea of being completely in another place, not connected with Earth directly, I think that's going to be super hard. I think the most challenging aspects of going to Mars is not actually related to how to get there. It's more about the whys. Why are we actually going there? What are our motivations and why are we designing those missions in certain ways? Because if we don't clarify that and really discuss that, we are unlikely to get what we want. I think for humanity to step foot on Mars would be I mean, an incredible achievement. We've seen how significant the Apollo 11 landing was. For the 20th century, it was the greatest achievement of that century, and, and possibly right until now, the greatest achievement of humanity as well. Yes, sir, reading you loud and clear. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. I think to actually take that one step further and set foot on another planet. And Mars is so exceptional as a planet as well. I mean, it's got a remarkable history, a very dynamic history. Unlike the moon, which hasn't changed for millennia, Mars really has changed. It once had an atmosphere, uh, which means that it was probably warmer. It had liquid water, possibly covering a third of the planet in ocean. It still has plenty of water ice locked up on Mars. And so where, of course, there is or has been liquid water, there's a chance of finding life, either past or present uh, microbial life forms. So Mars is absolutely fascinating for humanity to be able to explore another planet that did have the possibility for life and who knows, maybe in the future, will again have the possibility for life. That will be remarkable. I think it will take a few more years before we really step foot on Mars. But it might not be me anymore going to Mars. I'm probably too old, but I've gotten seven and eight year old. And I truly believe that it's probably that age, those kids that will grow up and probably become those first Martians. I think it will be a great adventure. Um, and I think it would actually be rather more than that uh, in that the people who go to Mars will be ill adapted to living there. And they will be going there probably 40 or 50 years from now and by that time we'll have made huge progress in robotics and miniaturization and in genetic modification so it will be possible to redesign the next generation so if they settle there then their next generation could be very very different could be redesigned to live in this very hostile environment with a different atmosphere different gravity etc so these crazy pioneers on Mars will be, in a sense, the precursors of a post-human species. And of course, if those new post-humans have much longer lives than we do, or if they're purely electronic, then they can go far beyond Mars because they may not need an atmosphere if they're electronic. And if they're near immortal, a long interstellar voyage is no deterrent to them. So they will be important in determining how life and intelligence spreads far beyond our solar system. So that's why it's important. But on the other hand, 
I'd like to put in a cautionary note, which is that I think it's a dangerous delusion to think of Mars as a place for mass emigration to avoid the Earth's problems. We must cherish our earthly home because Mars will never be um, as agreeable for human beings as where we are at the moment here on Earth, which is an environment we've adapted to for billions of years. We absolutely should not see Mars as a realistic alternative to living on planet Earth. We need to be prioritising our only planet, this planet, and making it a better place for everyone for future generations. Ice caps are melting, species are dying out, rainforests are on fire. We need to be focusing on that. If we put all of our attentions into what's happening here, I think we stand a better chance of surviving and thriving here for a much longer time. It's tempting to divert our attentions to an entirely undiscovered territory, but I don't think that's what we should be doing. Besides the advancements in technology and biomedical engineering, material science, self-sustaining systems, etc., I think going to Mars would mean that we have this opportunity to really zoom out and to get a much better perspective to something so close and familiar, uh, which is our life here on Earth. But it will also really help us to really zoom in into the unknown and these hidden bits deep within us and really unlock um, things we didn't know we are capable of, uh, both wonderful and worrying. Well, when you go to Mars, think about this. You have to take everything with you, right? It's not like the International Space Station where you have a supply mission every few months. No, going to Mars for three years, you better be clever in what you pack. So thinking about that, they will have to recycle and reuse whatever they have there. So I think it's a great exercise in thinking around circular economy and sustainable architecture, because it's not a nice thing to have sustainability on Mars. It actually is a matter of life and death. Remember, to the moon, we went for three days. It's kind of like a holiday, right? Um, you're kind of a tourist on the moon. But going to Mars, we have to stay there for longer than a year. We're really gonna inhabit Mars. We're gonna live there. So I think you stop becoming an Earthling and you become a Martian. I was even wondering, what kind of passport would you need to live on Mars? And that's what I think was really interesting. You know, going to Mars, we should not divide up the whole planet like we did on Earth. We're just all Martians. So obviously one of the big questions about going to Mars is, did life arise elsewhere? Did life actually arise on Mars and actually seed life to Earth? That's a big question. But actually another fundamental question is, what was Mars's early history? And the interesting thing is that Mars has really, really old rocks that we don't have many of on Earth. So one reason to actually go to Mars is to look at these really ancient rocks and learn about early planetary evolution that we can't learn about from Earth. And to me, that's actually perhaps an even more exciting problem than actually whether life arose on Mars. I think we'll learn an awful lot by going to Mars. Just the act of preparing us for the mission in terms of the technology and how that technology will feed back down to what we do on planet Earth. We're going to need to learn more about propulsion systems. Uh, this will lead to cleaner, more efficient engines back here on Earth. Uh, we're going to need to have closed life support systems. Our solar panel technology has already been pushed so much further by space exploration and that's making it more efficient for use back here on Earth as a source of clean energy.
energy. So solar panels are going to have to become more important. Learning how to recycle our water. We recycle about 85 to 90 percent of our water on the space station. We're going to have to get that up to nearly 100 percent for a mission to Mars. Clearly that has huge impacts for sustainability back here on Earth as well. And in terms of cleaning our atmosphere, learning how to grow other foods uh, you know, and become autonomous as a crew, that can help agriculture back here on Earth. And all of the medical uh, effects as well, that when we study medicine in space, that feeds back to helping people back on Earth who suffer from various disabilities and diseases. So we will learn an awful lot uh, on our journey to Mars, not just in the terms of the technologies. We haven't even got to the planet yet. Once we get to the planet, of course, uh, I mean, one, one human on Mars for a day could do more than any of the rovers have ever done on Mars in terms of our knowledge and our understanding of that planet. So, going to Mars, um, what we pack is, is very important to survive and to, and to live there. But if it's one item that I just can choose, right, um, it might be a piece of art. I think I'd have to take Spotify. I'd need music, I'd need podcasts, I'd need conversations, I'd need sounds, I'd need beats, I'd need rhythms. I, I, give me a few minutes, I need to think about that because I haven't thought about that. I suppose I would want to take some um, music and um, maybe the other things I could have on my uh, iPhone or whatever's replaced the iPhone by then. I would definitely take a pot plant, a fern or a palm or something, just to remind me of forests, basically, because Mars is a dry, dusty place with no greenery. And so a little pot plant would just remind me of Earth. A little reminder of home would be nice. So I would definitely take the ex-Earth smellscape capsules with me. Uh, having a smell of my horse with me would be quite nice, I think. For a mission to Mars, um, what would I pack? I think, um, you know, what, what you're going to really miss, of course, is friends and family and things that remind you of home. It's very important to have that connection to planet Earth, whether it's things like listening to uh, audio tracks of just rain falling or thunderstorms or waves crashing on a beach. Um, these things really give you a connection to your home planet. Uh, I think that's what I would pack is, um, you know, soundtracks. I'd like uh, recordings from friends and family that I could listen to uh, to remind me, uh, you know, of those personal connections that you have with our home planet.